Hi, this is Glenn with uh, Crimson Lotus Tea. We're here in, uh, in Genshui today. This is Wanyao Village. We're going to be looking through some uh, uh, traditional Genshui uh, pottery uh, studios. Um, all the stuff around here has all been rebuilt just from the last couple of years. Looks really nice, looks really old, but it's all, uh, it's all entirely newly built. Stuff wasn't here the first time we started coming down here. So uh, we're going to go, uh, go around and visit some shops and check out some places and uh, let you guys kind of see, uh, see what we see when we're here. Most of the shops you're going to find are on this really tiny little street, and it actually is a very tiny little street. How can we see that? Uh, traffic jams are uh, very, very, very common. But every single one of these uh, these shops and stuff that you have here is all really fine, high quality uh, Genshui tea wares. Big, nice pots in the window behind me there. Um, there's a hundred or more little tiny shops up and down the street it's pretty easy just to walk into any of them and uh, see what you find everything's uh has some pretty decent prices there's this uh type of truck that you see everywhere in china you're gonna see it coming down the street here they're uh they're uh, basically kind of like similar like just like the really workhorse of uh the chinese farmer economy and you see them everywhere there we go it's coming up behind me yeah they're um pretty awesome little trucks they get everywhere but they are uh, super super Super, 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 super loud. Um, and they go up and down all over the place here. Uh, still a lot of construction going on here. Every day, every year we come back because uh, just there's more and more and more and more new stuff and constantly, uh, constantly evolving, changing, growing. Some of the uh, some of the side alleys have some interesting, uh, interesting stuff. But, uh, almost everything happens on the most everything happens on the main street. But definitely, definitely be careful when you're out here because it's, it's very easy to get cars. So we're gonna stop inside of this uh, this shop here and just kind of check it out, look at some of the teaware, and uh, show it to you guys and see what you think. Can I play shipping, huh? Oh, it's um, This place here has a lot of really awesome, like big vases and stuff, and uh, these traditionally be used for uh, kind of storing water, and you can actually store tea and all sorts of stuff in them as well. Um, so these things here, this is traditionally what uh, Jen Shui did like forever, long time. Um, these are actually chicken soup cookers, and I'll show you how they work. I'll pop one of these up in here, check this out. So um, they're actually hollow all the way through and uh, through a little funnel there. And so you would sit, you would put all your chicken uh, on the inside, chicken meat, just raw, vegetables raw. You put a little bit of water, some oil and stuff in there. And then the, uh, you would set it on top of uh, uh, steaming water, and uh, the steam would actually come up inside there. Like 45 minutes later, you've got like a really amazing like cooked chicken dish, which is pretty awesome. And um, yeah, this shop here also has a bunch of really cool, uh, whole bunch of really cool, uh, really cool teaware and stuff. They sell all sorts of uh, some really actually awesome. The uh, the double double wall stuff like these guys right here is super amazing, but uh, that stuff is usually like uh, really expensive. So it's actually two walls, and they carve out the outside and stuff, and it takes up. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of extra time, but um, yeah, no, they've just got, uh, got all sorts of stuff in here. Um, some of the more traditional stuff that Gentry would have done in the past. Uh, I mean, they, they still do, but what, before they started switching to do a lot more uh, tea wear and stuff, would be uh, a lot more of the traditional Chinese vases and stuff like that. So these ones here are actually uh, they're carved, uh, which is pretty awesome. I spent a lot of time polishing them. I see a couple of the ones over here have uh, the traditional. Um, traditional uh, carved out shapes and then it's actually inlaid with different types of local clay which is uh, which is super awesome. And those have been, uh, I mean, they've been making those things in, in Genshui for, uh, for a long time, a couple hundred years at least. Uh, interesting note about Genshui, Genshui actually was uh, presented as uh, uh, as art at the uh, Chicago World's Fair in 1931 which is pretty cool. So there actually is a history of, uh, history of Genshui in America that's almost, uh, almost 90 years old. Um, some of the more, uh, more tea, tea pots and stuff over here, pretty cool. And um, yeah, they got all sorts of uh, all sorts of good stuff. You just dig through and uh, find uh, find good deals. So you will see these occasionally. These are actually pretty cool. It took me a while to figure out what they're for, even though maybe perfectly obvious. Um, yeah, it's made out of uh, gentry clay. But these are used for uh, for scaling fish. It's kind of cool. You just scrape your fish down there and. Uh, scale the outside of them before you cook it. Uh, you still see these around. So up here in the distance, that is the uh, that is the original old factory. They've actually torn down a significant portion of it. They left the, uh, left the smoke stack and stuff up there. That's where a lot of uh, Genshui stuff is made for the last, uh, last hundred years, actually. Right here, just on the, uh, the side of the street, is a huge pile of, uh, of freshly dug white clay. So this will this will get taken and it'll get uh, uh, crushed and blended in to make the uh, 
the purple, the purple play, the gentry with the tap. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Just big, huge, uh, giant chunks of this stuff. You pull it out of the ground and uh, can work it in. You can also make uh, some stuff just using this, uh, just using the white clay as well. Some of those things look really nice. We're in the inside of a uh, studio here in Genshui, and these are a bunch of uh, larger, uh, traditional style Genshui uh, uh, vessels that they've made. We've got some really intricate, uh, intricate carvings and even uh, um, some different drawings and stuff like that. It's actually pretty cool. And um, so these ones are entirely finished. They're all. Uh, dry before they get killed. Uh, killed fired. Here's a nice little selection of uh, teapots and stuff here. Some really, uh, some actually really cool, really cool ones. They got some nice ornate carvings and stuff on them. And um, these ones here are actually probably going to be uh, going to be wood fired, knowing this, uh, knowing this studio. But uh, so it'll be interesting uh, to see what percentage of these teapots actually make it. Uh, probably, uh, probably less than 50 percent easily. After the, the pots are made, what this guy is doing is uh, he's actually drawing uh, using a, a brush on to the uh, onto the pot itself. And uh, everything in Gentry is made in a, a, a group of people. So his specialty is drawing the patterns and drawing the designs onto the teapot. Um, see if I can zoom in and kind of focus on it. It's really cool. So so this is his specialty. This is exactly this is everything that he he does. And so the other people are working on. Cutting them out and carving them, and so he takes every single pot that's been finished, or in this case, a, a cut, and he works on a, a drawing on a design by hand. After the designs have been drawn on, he moves to the person whose uh, specialty is, is, is carving. That's what uh, that's what this woman's specialty is. So it's pretty amazing. So she'll sit there with a, uh, a variety of different sharp tools, and she'll work uh, specifically in carving out the uh, carving out the shape. And this is uh, this is her job. This is her role. It's one of the interesting things about Genshui is. Uh, nothing's ever made by one person. People have their specialties, so an entire studio will actually uh, work together and each person will have a, a different specialty and they'll all work together to create the uh, final product. This is actually a really large piece and it's actually pretty cool. You can kind of see how they slowly work out to create the, uh, uh, to create the pattern and stuff underneath there. And it's, uh, it's very meticulous. It takes a lot of, uh, takes a lot of time to get the, uh, get the carving and stuff just right using a variety of uh, really sharp tools. So after this, um, the next person will take different types of colored clay and will actually inlay it and uh, to, to create the, the multiple color patterns that you see in a lot of, uh, lot of Genshui uh, tea wear and, uh, and Genshui pottery in general. The final steps after things have been entirely killed and finished and all that. This is where a lot of the polishing and stuff gets done. It's really dusty, really dusty in here. It's got to wear a mask and stuff. We use uh, uh, polishing wheels and water and some different stuff, do some different river stones and some things like that. And then we just work on doing that. We spend a couple hours on different pieces like that. It's really, really nice, uh, really nice, bright, uh, bright shiny, almost, uh, almost a mirror polish from it. Uh, so we're going to look inside of a, a, a gas kiln uh, here. This would uh, be for uh, doing a lot of the uh, a lot of the firing, L really high end, uh, very large volume. Um, you, you don't go to the, the kiln shop and just buy kilns. So, um, for example, this one here is actually all, nearly all the kilns and stuff here are all, all handmade. And so this is a fairly large volume one. You can really do uh, some really big, big production stuff here. It is a gas. Uh, it is a gas-fired kiln, which is uh, provides a lot more, uh, a lot more consistent heat and stuff. Uh, we're gonna look at a wood-fired kiln. Uh, kiln after this. This is the inside of a, a little wood-firing, wood-firing kiln. Um, they'll fire in something like this for about, uh, about five days. Um, on the outside, you've got a giant, uh, giant pile of a uh, giant pile of wood and a bunch of uh, little sacrificial pieces and stuff down here. Most of the stuff that doesn't work in a kiln is just kind of like left in piles outside of it, almost, uh, almost uh, in a sacrificial nature to the uh, to the uh, to the pottery gods. And uh, yeah, these things takes a takes a large amount of wood. This is probably just uh, what it would take to just kind of get it started. We're gonna have a lot more sitting around somewhere. There we go. Got a picture. Uh, got a video going from the inside of the kiln. This is a fairly, uh, relatively, uh, relatively small kiln. Um, all the dust and all the broken pieces and stuff. You see them all over the ground and stuff here. They just leave all that stuff in there. That's all. Uh, it's all sacrificial. Um, but it is. Uh, this will. Uh, this kiln operates for about nine days at a time when they do it. And you can see you've got the uh, that that grate there, and uh, the fire actually goes uh, underneath there. And you got some air holes and stuff uh, up in the top up there. It's kind of a. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. Kind of creepy to be being inside, but it's pretty cool. This is it. This is at the back end. This is where everything gets uh, everything gets fed in. So you keep all the wood and stuff around here, and you can see this is just a this is just a handmade handmade kiln. They, they built it themselves here. Um, you don't really go to a kiln shop, like I said, and uh, 
it's kind of hard to see deep down inside of there, but this is where the fire goes. And so you put the stuff onto the, uh, put this wood onto the bottom, kind of creates air and stuff, it draws it through into there, and they control that uh, 24 hours a day for, uh, until it's uh, until it's done. It's a found another uh, found another bit of a wood pile here. So this is about um, uh, maybe like an eighth of what they would actually need. So there's a fairly large pile here, and um, this one actually lasts them out long. So this is left over from their last one. So you stack this up about four or five times, and you've got what it'll take for about a week. Uh, for to fire the kiln for about a week. Uh, it's expensive, it's expensive because they use a, a really special special pine. It's gotta be cut the same, cut the right way. And um, it'll easily easily cost a lot of money, 500 to 1,000 dollars, just in the just in the amount of wood that they need to, to keep the kiln running for one week. So that's one of the things that uh, raises the, uh, the, the, the price of uh, wood fire teapots and, and, uh, and other tea wares. So across the street from Wanya Village is some really new uh, New construction stuff. We're calling it Gentry Zitao Street, uh, Gentry Gentry Purple Clay Street, and uh, it's a lot of like really, 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 really like, high-end shops. We're gonna uh, walk through there. I'm sure. One of the cool things in the uh, the Gentry Zitao Street is um, they've got some old. Uh, uh, there used to be an old factory here, and so we've actually got one of the uh, one of the original kilns and stuff. And have it all still uh, still set up. This would have been a this would have been a wood-fired kiln. Um, it's a decent, decent size one, which is kind of cool. They've got it inside of a structure to kind of, uh, kind of protect it. It's pretty old, um, but granted, it's probably maybe it's only about 50 years old or so. Yeah, the shops that are on uh, the Gentry and Zetel Street are really, really high end. Um, this place is actually open until 10 o'clock at night. All these shops are going to be open for about the same. And um, this kind of depends kind of like a little late life hot spot in Gentry right now, which is kind of new and kind of cool. And um, yeah, so if you're here late at night, come in to uh, come check it out. Definitely. Uh, again, the shops are a lot more high end, so it's going to be a lot more, a lot more expensive. Um, but there's some really, uh, really cool stuff here. It's just a fun place to, uh, fun place to hang. Uh, at, the, at the end of the street, it's pretty cool. There's a little pottery studio. You can get in there and you can practice. You can learn make stuff. Uh, the Gentry Zita Street goes all the way down to a uh, really gorgeous uh, lake down at the bottom, and um, uh, a lot of really cool, uh, really cool shops and evening shops and stuff. They open some bars and stuff, even like a coffee house and things like that. Gentry is a pretty awesome town. If you get a chance to come and check it out, you definitely should. It's really gorgeous. It's a beautiful town. Um, we didn't even get a chance to go through uh, Gentry Old Town, which is which is pretty awesome. It's just not pottery focused. So I don't spend as much uh, time there. Uh, next video, I'm going to try and get in and do a tour of a traditional uh, dragon kiln. It's been operating in Gentue for uh, for a while now, and that's uh, that's going to be pretty awesome. So uh, check out the next video, and uh, thanks for uh, thanks for watching this one. Like and subscribe, we'd appreciate it, and follow the rest of our uh, adventures and our trip over here. Thanks.